the, from the group, a very high percentage of success. Uh, and uh, I would love to talk to all the candidates who are going to be logging in soon. And we are going to start very soon. So keep following us on MedExam Expert. Keep in touch with us on MedExam Expert. We are going to run a congratulatory video. We are going to run everything in terms of how we ran this course and what are our future plans to run further courses for this, as well as the upcoming MRCPI OSCE part, which is the second part uh, of this uh, membership exam for the RCPI. <laughs> Thank you very much. Aisha, how are you? Sabah, how are you? Shadia, you can also send a reminder in the Telegram group. Sabah or Aisha, whoever used online. Uh, okay, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Shadia. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Rukhaya. How are you? Very welcome online. We're going to start in the next few minutes. We will let other people join in as well. <laughs> Seeing people joining us, Dr. Harris, Dr. Anas Sajid, Dr. Rukhaya, very warm welcome. And welcome, Dr. Tahira. I know you're in the clinic today, but we would love to hear from you. What a great mentor you are. What a great team we have, Ms. Aisha, Ms. Saba, everybody who, Ms. Anam, everybody who has uh, been part of the success story for MedExam Expert and our candidates, of course, your hard work, your perseverance, your endless nights, your endless woes, your endless anxiety, your endless preparation brought you here. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Nazia, how are you? Wa alaikum as -salam. You can- Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum as -salam. See, did I tell you? Congratulations, yes. clap for you, alhamdulillah. What a fun, I would like Hear from so you. much. Tell us your story. Uh, your story is yours. I don't know. I don't have words even like because I had very little time. I within three weeks I studied and but whatever you advise and follow, I followed that. That's it. And I focused uh, on uh, the questions also uh, that is uh, really brainstorming and whatever your lectures, I listened all those lectures and I finished the questions bank and that um, recalls as well. 
and but within three weeks and i focused all the time for study 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 and alhamdulillah I did how many it hours well. how many hours do you mind me asking did you study every day for three weeks three weeks almost all the time except okay. uh, bus prayer food like uh, uh, i mean eight to ten hours oh uh, big hug big hug to you now I especially so want everybody who is listening today, uh, because because we are live streaming today and we have our uh, you know um, accomplished candidates also joining in in with us. So the most important thing is, tell me the background of your story. What happened in COVID? How was COVID for you? How did you take it from there? That is the thing yes. that will give everybody a morale boost up because, you know, I mean, I hold you very special to my heart. I want to know from you, how did you, how did you go through the COVID? What happened and how, how did the exam and now what is your reflection? Because now you're ready, technically ready for part two uh, OSCE exam for the MRCPI very soon, inshallah. So how do, what, what was your story? What was going on through your mind when you were starting preparing, when you joined the med exam expert? What was going through out of your mind? I would like to know from you. Sure, ma'am. Actually, when I was working and I was dealing with the COVID patient as well, and mm -hmm. but uh, I I couldn't uh, yeah, I get infected with the COVID during COVID time. But December 2021, and uh, that was uh, I had some lecture in a conference, and um, I had busy day anyhow that day. But uh, I got fever, and I don't know what happened. Within 24 hours, I was very sick and with high grade fever, and I collapsed. And I was at work even. Mm. from work to home and uh, I feel I'm not okay at all. I feel some sharp chest pain and I, I thought maybe I'm getting heart attack because uh, uh, I don't know what's happening with me. That was just uh, somebody's putting the knife inside my chest and that was, uh, I was not able to breathe. Little cough start and I fell down and collapsed. And wow. the last moment, my word was, I asked my husband, Please call him Mullins. And I said, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's it. That was my last word. And I collapsed. And actually, that was pulmonary embolism. And then and you I woke was, up the uh, ICU then? Uh, no, I don't know. Because um, they did CPR and all those things. Um, uh, when the ambulance came, and by the way, I was in the hospital. And ICU and unwent a ventilator. And I don't know. Allah has blessed me another life. And no, my consultant, when I discharge uh, from the hospital, he said to me, you are tigress, doctor. And, you know, the God sent you back because he wants you still you serve the humanity uh -huh. and he needs you further. So please don't stop yourself. Then he asked about my, they said, don't stop your studies. You had uh, training. So why not writing the exam? Then I started again my journey slowly. And I started study slowly, slowly, all the guidelines and everything. Anyhow, but uh, in short, thank you so much, ma'am. You I are. Don't know. Yeah, you are. Able to... when, I, when I met you for the first time a few months ago, I was so inspired by your story. You know, I mean, this is something. And then I made a special prayer for all of you during my Hajj as well. That, you know, may Allah yes, grant you. Yes, I requested you, ma'am. Uh, yes, I ask you, ma'am, pray for me. Request. Should yeah. Should I go for exam or no? You said you will You will do You will do it. You will do, ma'am. You told you me like that. You can do it. You can do it. The spunk in you, you will do it. So well done. That's a special clap for you. And I hope everybody who's listening to this uh, podcast, everybody who's listening um, on, on the stream, you know, will get uh, some encouragement and some morale boost up uh, by Dr. Nazia's story that, look, it is still possible in three weeks and it is still possible after having such a such a great, uh, you know, um, such a huge amount of uh, stress in terms of health care and mobility that Dr. Nazia is, is able to pass her exam and she's standing here and proudly telling her story of success now how how does your home and your family feel today you know after you gave the good news to them last yesterday, night yesterday actually i was at work yeah. and uh, i was at work and uh, my nurse told me there is something for my patient she called me to come in the treatment room i said okay yeah. i'm coming then my mobile is blinking uh, for the email wow. and, yeah. oh my god uh, this is for rcbo uh, should i open or no I don't know what should I do. Oh and I said to my nurse, please give me five minutes. I I'll come to the uh, treatment room. Then You're I come back to my, my house is fluttering. Yes, yeah. <laughs> First I make, you know, just I put my head down and I said, Allah, I'm nothing. Ya Allah, you help me. 
and i don't know you give me life and just you help me then i open the email and i didn't see percentage anything i saw pass oh my god and my eyes is full of tears because i suffered a lot for my health in this and it's quite difficult for me and of course all, all all that you suffered alhamdulillah alhamdulillah you are a best mentor and um, rather than this you are an excellent human being doctor and the way you supported me morally and you said to me you will do it all about you guys today is not about us and i had done finally you have done it you have done it and we we hope to see you inshallah in the oski course and i i'm sure you're going to fly in the oski as well and i was i was really hoping that i can i can meet you all one day inshallah but like i wish you all the best for the for the, for the next exam okay who is yeah, next thank now thank you god bless you darling dr nazia thank you very much dr thank anas you. or dr harris are you guys online are you ready to talk we need to hear from you and dr tahira very, very warm welcome thank you our dear mentor for joining us today dr tahira has been working tireless, tirelessly day in and day out with you on the telegram group and uh, together with uh, the team med exam expert of admins you know we have made the uh, group for you for practicing the sbas and also individually in the group also we are uh, working together with you on a daily basis and then we are going to do the online things you know you you, you know you we we have done it everything for you i would like to know from you how are your families how do you feel now you can write in the chat or you can uh, open your microphone uh, uh, go ahead uh, you know i mean we would love to hear from you today is your day basically and um hello dr sala how are you and i would like uh, to congratulate everybody who has passed i have a list of names to congratulate all of you um we, we have dr komal Dr. Halima, Dr. Arbaba, uh, oh my God, Dr. Sidra Rauf, Sidra Malik, Dr. Najla, Dr. Nazia, Dr. Afaf, Dr. Faria, Dr. Munazza. There are so many names, oh my God, Alhamdulillah. And for uh, for all of you, we have uh, you know um, discounted rates for our MRCPI OSCE courses as well. And at the end of uh, today's. Uh, uh, online session, congratulatory sessions. Our team will be ready to take your calls, to take your messages, to explain to you how to go about that. And um, anybody who would like to unmute yourself and talk, I am going to share my screen for a wee while. And then um, let's see what we have. I just wanted to talk about what the future holds for us from, from one group to the other. Um, how we are planning to go ahead. Uh, this is a little story from my end about uh, the my fellowship from the Royal College of Physicians. I did my membership exam, MRCPI, back in 2002. I'm a very primitive doctor. And then um, uh, back in 20. 19 i got my fellowship for the for the royal college so this was a video that the college released today um, family from royal college this is this mary higgins mary is the and chief for all the exams the, i've earned the respect of my peers in doing so because you have to go through the process in order to actually become a fellow and um, that involves getting people to nominate you and that also means that there's a period of reflection as well and thinking where you've come from and going from a member to a fellow I didn't realize how symbolic it is to actually take that step forward and to to really realize you are a member of a very august organization it's wonderful to be here and to be part of all of that it means the world to me the training and direction of doctor education uh in Ireland in the future, and indeed internationally. To become a Royal College Fellow means the world to me. The most important thing is that my life has come a full circle. I have been in Ireland for more than 15 years before I moved out to Saudi. And coming back, I can, I can tell you very confidently that the Royal College has been the center of excellence and center of standard and care and safety. I'm delighted to uh, be offered the opportunity. Okay, so we have Dr. Komal with us. 
uh, the Krakomal writes, Dr. thanks, Dr. Shazia, so nice of you. I want to ask how long after written can you appear in the OSCE? Suppose we do not appear in the next one, how long written is valid? All right, that's a very good question. And I have the answers today for you guys. So that's your answer. You couldn't have asked it at a more better time. So your part one written is, is for six years. And then part two, after passing the part, part two written, you can do the clinical OSCE anytime in the next three years, my darling. Okay, is that okay? Does that answer your question? It's three years. All righty. And um, another thing is that after the next exam, just bear with me for one second. Um, I'm just going to show you the one slide. What are the dates for your upcoming exam if you would like to apply? The college is going to give you more details about it. So keep a check on the college calendar. Uh, they will publish more information of 2025 examination and due courses. And these are your centers. February 2025 is going to be Muscat Oman. May 2025, uh, your OSCE. I, you know, I'm having goosebumps. I can't believe it. But now we are talking about the OSCE exam. Well done, everybody. So May 2025 is going to be UAE and Ireland. And November 2025, if you're giving the November 2025, you'll be able to meet me because I'm the exam convener for the Riyadh Center and the examiner. And it's also running side by side in Ireland as well. So those are your exam dates. And uh, when we talk about uh, how how uh, and what we do with the with the exam, so I have got some QR codes in this um, uh, session today that you can take a photo from your camera. So all the curriculum for the um, MRCPI OSCE exams is in that. It's OSCEs and clinical. Clinical is a 25 minutes uh, gynae or obstetrics clinical. Uh, which has two examiners and the role player and a uh, simulation uh, task with the, with a mannequin that you have to show the examination on mannequin. And then there are, um, these are the examination rules and regulation if you want to take a photo for the part two OSCE examination. Um, that's all the rules and re uh, regulations for the examination. And then when you have the OSCE circuit, they are 10 minute each circuit. And there are seven active OSCE stations. Then there are two rest stations, station number four and station number eight are the rest stations. And then this is the Institute of Obstetrician and Gynecologist uh, manual, basic curriculum for our exam. And again, this is another uh, QR code for the curriculum. You want to take a photo of that and keep it handy so that you can read it in your own time what we need to do for that. And then let me see who else has been able to join in. Oh, too many people. Let's see. Who do we have? Hi, Dr. Anuradha. Hi, how are you, Dr. Amina? Dr. Nalini, how are you? Dr. Farzana, Dr. Hajira, Dr. Khalid, Dr. Manik Manikam, Dr. Um, uh, Komal and Dr. Nazia, we have already spoken to you guys. So any one of you uh, want to want, want to talk about your success stories, either in the chat or you want to open your microphone, now is your time, please. We would love to hear from you. A heartiest congratulations to all of you for passing your MRCPI written exam. I know you have had day in and day out anxiety, whether I'm going to pass or whether I'm going to not pass. And here you are all today reflecting on how we did and what next from here. So I'm, we are so very proud of you as a med exam expert that we were a little part of your journey, of your success story. And we want to take you further for the OSCE preparation course, be it online, long course, or be it on-site uh, mock exams as well. We are actually running an, an, another MRCPI mock exam on the 1st of November in Riyadh and um, also in the end of October in Pakistan and in Dubai as well. So that is for the for the for the clinical exam in November. But as the new year arrives, we are going to announce more and more dates and more and more venues as well. Hi, Dr. Anuradha. You are very welcome, darling. And yes, we will be together hand in hand. Dr. Nalini, how are you? You haven't given the exam yet, but you want to give in March. So keep an eye on the college website so that they will be announcing soon when the diet is going to open, when you have to register your interest, etc. And today's session is about the details of the exam. Um, very welcome, Dr. Arbaba. I remember the conversation with you about the table. Do you remember that? I would love you to open your microphone and talk to us today. So you know, one day before the exam, we were sorting out the furniture in the room, I remember. And here you are today, MRCPI written exam pass. Well done. Well done. 
assalamu alaikum ma'am thank you so much ma'am jazakallah God bless you. God bless. I, you know, you were always at the back of my mind every day. I was, I was praying for you all. And you know, some Thank some you. people have a special place in your heart. You know, when you are like, you were such innocent, such innocently, you were asking me, "What do I do for the table?" I'm like, "Don't worry at all. As long as you have a clear cold room, go for your exam. Don't think about anything. Don't worry about anything." <laughs> That was that was just yes. like, like a con, you know conversation between like two sisters or a mother and a daughter like you know just you you yes, got exactly ma'am <laughs> exactly ma'am exactly ma'am thank you so much for support uh, Dr Tahira also helped us a lot then uh, I want to share something with you that uh, in last year I attempted for part two uh, MRCOG actually um, uh, in the meanwhile I was having a cyst in my thyroid wow. Uh, I was not. Um, I was very um, afraid of uh, operating it, so I uh, I did not went for that. But uh, the doctor advised that it should be. Uh, you should undergo the surgery. Uh, there was only fifteen to twenty days, hardly in part two exam. I was fully prepared, but uh, I have to undergo that procedure. I was. Uh, I have to undergo partial thyroidectomy. And wow. after cystopathology, it came out to be oncocytic carcinoma. Oh. It was in last last yeah. July, I I think so. Last yeah. June, June at the end wow. of June. And how are and you doing? Ma now? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm perfect. Alhamdulillah. Oh. But I I, I yeah. thought that at yeah. that time yeah. I could I I could not do this exam. Uh, I failed in MRCOG part two by sixty. I got sixty four percent. But I lost my hope and I was not able to attempt any uh, further exam. Uh, but this time I thought uh, I should go for MRCPI part two written. And Alhamdulillah, 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 I, yeah. <laughs> I passed. Well done. Yes. What, 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 a, what a story. What a good morale booster. I hope everybody around the world is listening to us. I hope everybody who could join us today are, are getting inspired by your story. What an inspirational person we have uh, on board with us. So kudos to you. And how, how was the reaction of your family yesterday? How yes, was the my my kids said, "Mama, you were not sure of that. You you can oh pass God. the exam." Oh I was God. very I was very frightened. Actually, maybe due to part two MRCOG, I thought yeah. I can't pass any exam. But yeah. Alhamdulillah, 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 no, no, no. I passed See, it. I told you, I, I, told you, I, you can do it. Just I owe to it. Allah exactly, ma'am. I owe to Allah uh, for all the all my success, and uh, you people helped a lot. Alhamdulillah, I Dr. got everything. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We're going to so gonna meet again in the OSCE as well. So, inshallah, um, inshallah. Dr. Anurad, Anu, Dr. Anu, are you are you available to talk? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anu, are you there? Yes, yes ma'am. I'm there, ma'am. Let me clap for you. Well done. Ma'am, I did not write my exam till now, ma'am. I'm okay. going All to write right. in March. Okay, so we are, today's session is about, is about all about what, what we are going to do for the March prep, inshallah. Yes, ma'am. I've already joined the MedExpert yeah. team and I've finished yeah. my part one also with MedExpert. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, excellent. So excellent. I'm hoping to pass with Radio you, ma'am. Part, ma and part two is going to be no 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 biggie for you. You're going you're gonna to catch all the things. In Thank the, you, ma'am. Like Thank that. you, ma'am. I'm excellent. looking forward to excellent. being with you, ma'am. Perfect, perfect. We are all me, Dr. Tahira, all the team of MedExam Expert Edmund, we are with you in this story. Thank you, ma'am. Thank and you so much, ma'am. Your success story. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank ma you so much, ma'am. Great, great. Now coming back to the exam format. Yes, who's that? Ma'am, mom, one minute, Dr. Shalzi. I want to add one thing. And uh, yes. your three days uh, workshop that was really helpful. Oh. And uh, you message you must attend these three days. And I was not active in the group, you know. It, but these three days, and I consistently like I took all the session you had conducted, and that was wonderful. And thanks a lot again for you and Dr. Oh. Tahira and all the exam much. team. And, and it thank was you. really helpful these three days. And second thing, you didn't ask any extra charges or extra money for that. And I'm really appreciate yeah. all those. Uh, your support to you all that. because you all were very anxious. We said, okay, let's run, run uh, an extra class and let's see what we can, we can do and see the result. The result is set, is a telltale. So congratulations. Exactly, thank, you, ma thank you very much exactly, for mentioning that very important 
point. Yes, yes. Those three days really helped a lot. Really, yes. really helped a lot. The Ravian uh, process was uh, very boosted with these uh, three days. Exactly. How many, how many hours were we online every day? I I, I remember four hours. I, I four, to four, hours. Hours. four to five four hours. Four to five hours. One day was hours. almost six hours. And other days, I think hours. five hours every day. Five hours. Yes. Every day. That was very, very intense. And thank you very much, Dr. Tahira. She is the hero at, in, in, in the behind the scenes who has been cross-checking all the answers for us and preparing everything for us. So thank you so ever very much, Dr. Tahira. I know she has a clinic today, so she told me if she finds time, she will unmute herself. Can you find time, Tahira, to speak to all of us now or no? All right, so coming, coming to the exam format, now, you will have one OSCE, which will either be gynae or obstetrics, and that will be a 25-minute OSCE. So that is something that you may have never done before, but we will give you enough practice. There is an um, MRCPI OSCE course going on right now uh, since the last three or four months, and we are towards the end of that course now, and it's running very successfully, very smoothly. And uh, half of our candidates have been offered a place in Dubai and in Egypt and in Ireland, and some of them are for the next exam as well. So I wish you all the very best. And then, uh, so one station, either gynae or ops, and two examiners, one role player, one mannequin, either either gynae mannequin or obstetric mannequin, and you're expected to examine um, them as well. I will give you a few examples towards the end of this um, talk today. And then we have the OSCE circuit, which has nine circuits in all, but two of them are uh, rest station, station number four and eight, and seven of them are uh, live stations. And we have obstetrics and gynecology and simulation and role player, and we'll tell you exactly how that also works. Bear with me for a second. And then, so let's talk about the OSCE. The structure of the OSCE is like nine stations. So station four and eight are the rest stations. Station one and six are obstetrics. It could be anything from obstetrics, really. Then station two and station nine will be gynecology. And then station three is labor ward management. So the college loves to do this labor ward management Well, they will throw in six or seven tasks and they will ask you to align those tasks, what needs to be done in each room and who do you want to send in each room, et cetera. And then station number five and six, one of them is going to be communication and the last one is going to be simulation. So this is the setup of the OSCEs. So two obstetrics, two gynecology, general ones, one communication, one simulation and one labor ward management. Understood everybody? Everybody. And we will go in, you'll go into all the details when you join our course. We'll explain to you exactly how it is done. Uh, even the role players that we have are actually the role players that we are using in the exam. So they are very familiar with, with the role play and all. So a uh, single simulated uh, case, um, either in obstetrics and gyne gynecology, will be in the morning long case. And the duration is 25 minutes, as I said. You will be interacting with the role player or an actor where you will be doing a detailed history taking. It's a 25 minute station, so you are expected to talk for history for about six to seven minutes. Then the examination model, you will do a clinical examination on it for another three to four minutes. Then you will discuss the management with two examiners and you will re-explain it to the role player as well. And there will be general discussion on a variety of topics. So the most important thing is because we, we are running the exam uh, at our hospital center for a while now, we don't want you to be late. So it's a good idea that if you're new in the city to look for your exam center a night before or a day before so that you know exactly where to come and you're not lost in logistics. And please bring in your email from the Royal College and also photo photographic identity like a passport or a license. And most importantly, what is required to pass? So potentially, uh, uh, the examiners will be assessing you in terms of excellent, clear pass, borderline, or fail. And then you may fail a minimum, maximum of one station of the OSCE. So out of those seven active stations, if you're passing six of them, you're passed. But you also have to pass the clinical aspect of the exam, the morning case, the 25-minute long case. Without passing that, you cannot pass the whole clinical OSCE, okay? And then key knowledge areas for OSCEs and clinical. This is the RCPI, International Institute of Gynecology, National Clinical Guidelines. And this is a QR code for all the gu Irish guidelines for you. Uh, you can take a photo while I talk. Let's see, is there anybody else joining it? What have we got in the chat? 
Um, God bless you, Dr. Arbaba, Dr. Anuradha also cleared her exam. And uh, okay, all right. Anybody has any questions so far? Okay, I hope you have taken a photo of this one. These are the clinical Irish clinical guidelines by the sure, ma'am. Yes, sure, please go ahead. Ma'am, one question, please. I, I want to ask if there are any difference uh, between the centers? Like no. uh, if we give exam in Ireland yes. or there is any difference between uh, we give exam in Oman or Dubai? Yes. That's a very good that's a very good question, Dr. Arbaba. The thing is that before every exam, either it's an old examiner or a new examiner, we all go through an examiner training. So say, for instance, if your exam starts on a Friday, on Thursday is an extensive training day for all examiners. So all examiners marking keys will be identical. So there's no bias in the examiners. Uh, and different in a sense that perhaps if you go to Oman or if you go to um, Riyadh or if you go to uh, Abu Dhabi, Al Ain, or if you go to um, Ireland, the, the pronunciation or the dialect of English may be slightly different. Other than that, there's no difference. And the way the two exams run simultaneously, like your May exam and the November exam will be running side by side in Ireland as well as in, in the international centers. So they guard the exam privacy and secrecy very, very closely. So even as an examiner, we do not get any, any hold of any papers until we are actually inside the cubicle with our phones outside. Okay. So the answer to your question again is maybe a slight different between the twang of the language or the way the English is spoken in, in Ireland or in Dublin as opposed to other centers because there is a, a sort of a different uh, diversity of examiners all over the world where the MRCPI is run currently. So hopefully with, with your good grasp on English, you should not have any problem getting access to any center. The important thing that we would need you to understand is that pick the center where A, you can get a visa with, easy, with ease and which is within your budget for travel and lodging as well. So that would be an intelligent decision that you would want to make, not depending on that. Uh, I have heard that uh, that center is what easy to pass the exam and that center was difficult to pass the exam. I think we need to be more practical and practical in a sense where it can be easier to gain access to visas as well as lodging. Okay, great. Any other question? Let's see. All right, so these guidelines, these, I, I just put down some example of the guidelines, like management of mesh complication, pelvic organ prolapse, placenta accreta spectrum, stress incontinence, primary PPH, postmenopausal bleeding, early termination of pregnancy, recurrent miscarriages, fetal anatomy scan, uh, stillbirth, vaginal birth after C-section, um, GBS disease. One quite common question that we get most of the time if, if the candidates are appearing simultaneously in MRCOG and MRCPI is that what are the difference between the guidelines. So when you will join our course and when you will gain access to all our course material, so whichever, uh, wherever there is a subtle difference between the guidelines, we give you flashcards for that as well. All righty. And in the OSCE, what is required to pass then? So and ideally, you should be confident when you come inside the OSCE. You should be well presented. Um, I have seen uh, candidates with goggles on front of their head or wearing a very bright colored big necklace, which is which is very interesting, but it just distracts, uh, you know, the exam scenario, if you know what I mean. Or I've seen um, male candidates who would be a bit untidy, a bit smelly as well. So try to avoid all those kind of problems as well. And speak clearly on that day. That is very important. And you should be uh, presenting the best version of yourself on the day. And uh, so let's do an OSCE example. This is a session, station one, say, for instance, it's an obstetric station, and this will be a 10-minute OSCE. So that's why you can see that the question is such a small one. A 34-year-old woman presenting for antenatal care, diagnosed with SLE, you will discuss the effect of this on her pregnancy and how will it influence the care. So within 10 minutes, you have to make a plan for that. So of course, when it, and, and this is how the examiner is going to mark you on their examiner marking sheet, which is called calibration sheet. So there will be clinical info, marks for clinical information, Always remember, there's a slight difference between marking of MRCOG and MRCPI that in every OSCE, each and every OSCE you have to give, you must give differential diagnosis. So there will be marks presented for differential diagnosis and for clinical judgment, for risk management and communication skills as well. These are the 
five domains that they're going, going to mark you on. So again, uh, this was the examiner information. This is like a key to that exam that a, a candidate is expected to take a detailed history, how and when the diagnosis was made, like did she have a full blood count? Was there an ESR done? Was there an anti nuclear antibody done? Anti-DNA antibodies done? What was her anti-RO and anti-LA? What about anti-phospholipid? And uh, the, the a good candidate should know that 30 to 40 percent of women with SLE may have a coexisting antiphospholipid syndrome and what symptoms she has currently or previously like an arthritis or skin disease or how are her kidneys, how's her blood levels, when was the last flare, what medications is she on and has she been planning for the pregnancy? So what, she, what has she done in the last six months? Remember for any medical disease in pregnancy, she should be disease free uh, for things like epilepsy or things like SLE for six months at least, right? So um, then again, so you need to talk about preconceptual care. If she's on medication, what's the effect of those medications on unborn fetus? What's the effect on pregnancy? What's the effect of pregnancy on her medication and disease and so on and so forth? And does she have any comorbidities? Because being pregnant with SLE, she has a risk for herself for preterm delivery, for hypertension, preeclampsia, for thrombosis. And the baby has a risk of miscarriage, baby has a risk of IUGR, baby has a risk of early iatrogenic uh, delivery. So all these things, uh, and then how are you gonna plan her pregnancy? Are you gonna give her uh, aspirin? Are you gonna put her on some medication? What is her renal status? Uh, so again, uh, you have to tailor a management plan according to that and the differential diagnosis. So there is always one or two marks for the differential diagnosis that you may want to tell the examiner and you may want to tell the role player that there could be other reasons like arthritis, like skin disorders, like hematological diseases uh, that may be contributory to the condition, but most likely it looks like it is SLE. And then you, of course, with any medical problem, you always use the word, the buzzword is, MDT, multidisciplinary team, okay? So you might want to involve all the multidisciplinary, like a renal, hematology, fetal medicine, derma, rheumatology, and anesthetist if you are delivering her um, operatively. And so now this is um, this is that example. And again, you will ensure the ongoing pregnancy. You will, um, we've just discussed that, so I'm not gonna go into the detail. I just showed you the examiner marking key actually, all right? And um, so again, Let's see. Bear with me for one second. Yeah, let's let's talk about examiner's information again. So this is specific examiner information for you. Let me go back a few slides. Yeah. All right. So the clinical, in terms of clinical judgment, they will uh, be expecting you, you'll be expected to talk about the mode and timing of delivery. You'll be talking about steroid cover. You'll be talking about, uh, you know, what is the timing of delivery? Postpartum, of course, you are going to mention about watching her blood pressure, VTE prophylaxis, uh, contraception, future healthcare. And uh, again, if we know that SLE ha can have more flares, uh, you know, during the postpartum phase to so talk about that. And neonatal review, if she had an anti row positive antibody and preconception care and medication. So all these, you know, carry a mark each. Now, for, for us as an examiner also, we get the question at 8 a.m. in the morning and we will be calibrating it then and there. So uh, think of the examiners as normal human being like yourselves. So we will write the most common things first in the calibration. I hope that makes sense, okay? In terms of risk management, so we know that this is a high-risk pregnancy and care plan is useful. And in terms of clinical communication, you'll be doing a good body language, talking to the examiner like I'm talking to you right now. If there's a role player in this kind of OSCE, then you're talking to the role player. You're, you're making sure that you're making the role player comfortable as well. And your thought process is very well organized and you're articulated. So based, based on your performance, then the examiner can give you an excellent or a clear pass at least, not a borderline preferably and definitely not a fail. So again, remind yourself that you may fail a maximum of one station and still pass the OSCE exam overall. But hey, 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 we are not going to be failed. We are we at med, med exam expert and our beautiful candidates, our intelligent candidates are not going to fail this exam, inshallah. Now, what about clinical? What is required to pass in the clinical? This is an example of a clinical. That's a 25 minute. So there the question will be slightly bit larger because you have got more time to study and more time to prepare for it because you have got 25 minutes. So you're asked to review a 21 year old woman. So there will be a role player. 
uh, increased abdominal pain, severe dysmenorrhea over the last six months. She's always felt her periods were painful since she was a teenager. And she presents, uh, she presents uh, to the gynae department for urgent consultation. She has no medical or surgical history. She has to miss her college classes or uni classes because of the pain. Her vital signs look okay. Her temperature is okay. Now you are gonna take a history and perform a clinical examination. So there will be mannequin provided. So you don't have to take the role player on the on, on the couch, but there'll be a mannequin provided. So at, at, at any given point in time, when you're done with your history taking, you will tell the examiner, I would like to examine the patient now. So then you will stand up and then the mannequin will be by your side and you'll be able to uh, show, demonstrate a speculum examination, pay attention to all the props present on the table. So if there's a um, um, tissue box or if there's a, um, a box of uh, gloves or if there's a box of lube, lubricant, anything, speculum especially. So you have to use all those or at least show the examiner that you know how to do that. If you don't do that, the examiner will prompt you, but that might you know, end up in getting your marks deducted a little bit because you were prompted. So you have to keep your eyes open. You have to do very well, exceptionally well in this clinical exam. All right, okay. So this is the role player's information for your knowledge that the role player, say for instance, if I'm Shazi and I'm the role player, so I am a 21 year old woman with increasing abdominal pain, severely painful periods over the last six months. I have felt my periods were painful since I was a teenager. However, the pain is getting more excruciating now. I'm studying to be a nurse, but I'm unable to attend the uni due to pain. Otherwise I don't have any other problem. I did have my appendix removed laparoscopically at 19 years of age. I've never had a cervical smear. So that's just thrown in for you. So when you ask for cervical smear, you, you ask her if she's sexually active, that's a good idea to offer her cervical smear as well. You have never taken the birth control pill. Uh, your parents are fine. They're in their mid sixties. They have no major health problem. They don't take any medication. You will accept any help, but if the doctor says that you need a laparoscopy or a keyhole surgery, um, a, a, it, it will be like blindly treating. So you need to ask more questions from the role, uh, from the candidates. So this would be the ultrasound report provided about this patient. It will say that the uterus is retroverted, difficult to mobilize, endometrial thickness is within normal limit. Both ovaries are enlarged, contain cystic structures, which contain low level echo and a grass gland appearance. Both ovaries are pushed down and kissing in the central abdomen, okay? So um, again, from an examiner's point of view, you need to take a history. You need to talk about differential diagnosis. What could be the reason of your pain? It could be uterine origin. It could be tubal or nexal origin. It could be ovarian origin. It could be cervical origin. It could be non-related to gynecology, like a bowel problem or any bladder problem. And then you need to talk about clinical judgment, how you're going to interpret the investigations, how you're going to do risk management in this case, and your communication skills will also be judged. You must pass this clinical aspect of the exam to be awarded the MRCPI. This is very important, okay? So uh, now your exam etiquettes and behavior and presentation are very important. Uh, whatever you do, whatever you appear is reflective of what you do in your normal uh, clinical life as well, or professional life as well. So don't dress up like the photo scene over here. Okay, this is from one of our courses from the MRCPI actually that, that we took the picture from. And, and believe you me, we, we do see such candidates. So as again, an, as an ideal candidate, you should be confident, you should be well presented, you should speak clearly, and you should present the best version of yourself. Okay, and listen for the alarm. There'll be a bell ringing. If, uh, and uh, for, the, for your 25 minute uh, task uh, for the long case, there will be a buzzer at 15 minutes that they will say 15 minutes remain, okay? All right, okay. And then for the 10 minute one, you are not given any, any time to prepare the task outside. You will just go inside the cubicle and the task will be before you for 10 minutes. So the good thing is that the task will be probably one or two lines only. You read that and you start your OSCE then. And remember the rest station. So four and eight will be your rest station. There'll be plenty of water for you. You sit down. You do not try to think about what you did in the previous station. Don't try to listen on the side the side walls. You know, you might be hearing something from here and something from there, from station number uh, five and station number six. So don't try to focus on that. That does not happen. 
Okay, now, so we not, do not only do online course uh, on Telegram as well as on Zoom, but we also do on-site courses uh, from MedExam Expert. And our uh, exam structure is like that, that we will give you long case for 25 minutes. And then this will be your OSCE circuit of nine circuits in total with the rest area on, on station number four and station number eight. And uh, these uh, were... These were the figures from the college itself. Uh, Irish trainees passing in first attempt in 2023 were 84%. Irish trainees in all attempts, 84%. Irish graduates in first attempt, 45%. International graduate in first, first attempt, 61%. International graduate, all attempts, 71%. So again, the, the idea is that the college does not want to fail you unless you do a grave mistake, okay? So the passing percentage of OSCEs and passing percentage of long cases is very good. The most important thing that you need to remember is that you need to be yourself on that day. Don't get nervous and, and we will teach you and don't worry about that either. We will teach you exercises to allay your anxiety and fear even before the exam. I have a lot of candidates contacting me separately in person, in online, and we do coaching exercises, you know, for anti-anxiety coaching exercise and how to present yourself and how to prepare yourself for the exam as well. This was just a small excerpt from the College uh, Institute of Oxford in Ghana colleges. This was in the online journal by the college. And this is me with my husband. And um, I would love to uh, remind everybody that preparing for this exam will not only help you becoming a better doctor, but it also allows us to develop our skills and add value to our interpersonal skills of empathy and understanding of diversity. And uh, now that the RCPI has opened new exam centers across the world, so us as international candidates have a brilliant opportunity of not having to worry about visas, processes, uh, lengthy visa processes and procedures, as well as traveling, as well as uh, scary logistics, et cetera. You can now take the examinations closer to your home without the hassle and ex expense uh, of all these logistics nightmares. All righty. Um, any, any question, any query so far? Can we run the video once again, um, Anam or Aisha? I'm going to end end the co end the course over here, and I'm going to stop sharing. Would love to see the video again from your end, please. And any questions? We are ready to take any questions from you guys. And who else is here? Who else is Dr. Manikam? How are you, dear? Dr. Nalini, how are you? Good to see you guys online. Excellent. Would you? Would any one of you like to unmute yourself and tell us about your story? Tell us about how how is your reflection on the exam so far? Go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. Maithi. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you all in our uh, very soon being announced uh, MRCPI OSCE course, uh, clinical OSCE course as well. Um, we believe uh, that, you know, uh, it's our responsibility as your tutors and as your mentors at the MedExam Expert, we, we take it very seriously that we give you correct judgment call for the exam. And when I say correct judgment call, it means that we do not uh, prepare you with wrong type of sentences, wrong type of templates. That is very important. What we believe, Sabah, you'll give me two minutes before you will play it. Sabah, give me two minutes, please. So what, what we see as examiner when we sit inside the examination cubicle is sometimes that there are hordes of students coming and jotting down the same template. Please listen to me very carefully about that. So say, for instance, if uh, uh, if Dr. Nazia is uh, my candidate and I will say, OK, hello, uh, if Dr. Nazia is my role player, say, for instance, in the examination cubicle. So I will say, uh, hello, my name is Shazia and this is my examination sticker. So no doubt I'm not saying I am the candidate for exam and I'm ready for the exam. Please don't say that. Please don't say that, all right? So, hello, my name is Shazia, and you will be provided an A4 size paper where you will have stickers. So you have to carry these stickers with you through all the circuits, all right, in uh, in the morning as well as in the afternoon or whenever your exam is. So when you enter the, enter the cubicle, all you have to say is smile, be positive, and say, hi, my name is Shazia, and this is my sticker. So they will, the examiner will say, hello, please sit down and read the question and let me know when you're ready, okay? So then when you're asking, like say for in instance, my role player's name is Nazia. So I'm gonna ask, hello, can I confirm your name please? All right, 
So she will say, my name is Nazia Malik. All right. So now please do not ask. I repeat, do not ask, how do you want me to address you? All right. This is absolutely not required. You are going to waste those precious 10 minutes. All right. So if she is Nazia, call her Nazia. Do not ask her, how do you want me to address you? Also, do not ask her, I am sorry to ask you a few embarrassing questions about your sexual history. Um, have you had sex? Have you ever had an STI? Have you, have you been smoking? Do you take any illicit drug? No. In Ireland, and also in England for that matter, we do not do that. We just ask it simply. Okay, let's talk about your social history. How long have you been married? Is this your first partner? How many partners have you had? Have you ever had a sexually transmissible infection before, like chlamydia or gonorrhea? Were you treated? Were your partner treated? Are you a smoker? How many would you smoke? Are you? Do you drink alcohol? Have you taken any over-the-counter medication or any illicit drugs? That's all. Be very bold. And bold is always beautiful, all right? Especially in the exam scenario. Don't be looking at the paper. Look directly into the eyes of the patient and make them feel comfortable, okay? So great, anybody would like to open your microphone and let us know about your exam journey and are you ready to come on board with the med exam expert and us to go through your OSCE um, preparation then for February, for May and for the November exam. Excellent. All right, let me let me open the chat. You, you guys can type in the chat group if, if you are... Uh, busy somewhere you can you can do your chat and for all of us listening to us all over the world uh, again uh, heartiest congratulations to all of you who have passed to not only just to you but to your family to your kids to your spouses to your parents whoever you live with with your siblings with your friends it is a great time to success uh, to, uh, to celebrate your success and the most important thing is that you did it give yourself a pat on the shoulder. This is a huge exam. This is a huge success story. So we are ecstatic at MedExam Expert to be a small part of your uh, clinical journey for your professional journey. And we are ready to take you to the next step ahead. And please run the video and let's see uh, what the video holds. Thank you. Yeah, please, if, if, if you all can open your camera, I would love to see you. Thank you for that reminder, Adam. Let's take a photo. Let's all open our, uh, open our, uh, yes. Hi, Dr. Maiti, how are you? Let's all open our cameras if we can, please. And let's take a photo. Excellent. Hi, Nazia. Thank you very much. All right, where is Saba? Where is Arbaba? Manikam, I want to see you all today. Because we have been connecting so much, it's good to see you see you in person as well. Excellent. Who else? Dr. Sadia, Dr. Seema, Dr. Harris. Thank you very much, Dr. Nalini. That's very kind of you. You gorgeous ladies. Well done. All right. Okay. And can we run the video now side by side, please? We have Dr. Najla, Dr. Afaf, Al Amro. And we have Dr. Munazza, Dr. Faria, Dr. Nazia, Dr. Sidra Malik, Dr. Sidra Rauf. We have two Sidras in the group. And Dr. Arbaba, Dr. Halima, Dr. Komal, all passing their exam, mashallah. So that's, that's great news. Saba, you okay there? Hi, Saba, are you okay there? You want me to run it for you?
Yes, Dr. Shazia, you can, please. Yeah, just give me two tick, please. Let me see. Okay. What happened at your end? Ma'am, there is an internet issue. That is why I'm not running. Don't properly. worry. Don't worry. Just give me two tick. I'm, I'm just going to log in. There you go. Where are we? Recording in progress. Okay, make me make me the host, please. I'm gonna okay. leave. Make me the host, please, Seba. Uh, you are host, ma'am. You can Thank speak you very now. Much. Thank you. You'll be able to see my photos shortly. Let me see. Box. Can you? Can you all see the photos now? Yes, Dr. Shazia. Great. So we have Dr. Faria Mumtaz. We have Dr. Halima. We have Dr. Komal. We have Dr. Sidra. We have Dr. Munazza. Heartiest congratulations to all of you, Dr. Sidra Rauf, Dr. Arbaba. Well done, everybody. We love you all. Dr. Nazia Malik, Dr. Najla Adil Ahmed. Mabrook, alhamdulillah, salama, Najla. Dr. Afaf al Amro. Very, very, very heartiest congratulations to all of you who have passed. This is a huge success for all of you and heartiest congratulations to you and your families from Team MedExam Expert. And on this note, I will take uh, leave from you all and thank you very much for all of you who could join us. And thank you very much, Team MedExam Expert. You go girls, well done everybody. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Bye-bye.